So, I got to play Destiny 2 on Xbox One X Scorpio X or whatever the fucking stupid name Microsoft wants to call that thing. <laughs> and I got a small amount of time to make a brief comparison of how the games are different among the consoles. I'm sure part of this will stoke the fanboy wars of 12 year olds who can't handle the fact that people might actually not give a flying fuck about a rival console, but I figured I would give a few thoughts on the motherfucker while telling the YouTube auto to go fuck himself. <laughs> now, over the holidays, I went over to my neighbor's place and they're a young couple and he's more of like a casual type game. He doesn't get into too many hardcore games like me, but he did play Destiny 1 and he just got Destiny 2 for Christmas. I mean, that is a seriously shitty gift. <laughs> You can either tell someone didn't like him or they didn't do research on the game and they got him the base game without any DLC on that shit. So in any event, I got to play for an hour or so on Microsoft's most powerful console ever and there were a few things that I was impressed with and then some things that I feel that I was a little disappointed in. Now obviously the gameplay in the background is mine from PlayStation 4 so that's not the Xbox One X whatever the fuck version since I really didn't record anything that I was actually doing. I was just knocking out random things on his account to rank him up a bit. He had a warlock and he started the night at 251 power level. By the end of the time that I played for him I got up to 292 because I'm a fucking boss like that. <laughs> Actually, it's because the DLC raised the power level to 335, and getting to the original power level of 305 is much easier when somebody does not have the DLC. So, let me get started with the good things about the console. First off, the graphics and resolution are utterly stunning. There is no doubt about that. On top of the power of the console, he has an LG OLED TV with that thin as a pencil screen that has amazing color and picture to it. So look, it's a legit setup. Undoubtedly, one of the best views you can get from a console television combo. Yes, PC, you have better picture overall, but from a console perspective, that shit is legit. The two areas that I really noticed the difference was flying in space, you know, where your ship is the AKA the loading screen. <laughs> you know, the colors are very vibrant and sharp, I will say that. Since the loading screen probably has the highest contrast of colors in the game, you can really see the power of the console and the power of his TV at the same time. The second area that was really noticeable was the Genesis Mind Strike. You know, where you run through those spinning lasers and deaths, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But the lasers were very crisp very sharp and provided a great contrast to the relatively dark background that the Pyramidian map has. Now, up until I went over to his place, I had not yet played Destiny 2 on my PlayStation 4 Pro and 75 inch TV in the living room. But after I played the Xbox One X shit, I had to try out my PlayStation 4 Pro with the recently added HDR support. Since my PlayStation 4 Pro is on Wi-Fi and it's not hardwired, I continue to play all my online games on my original PlayStation 4 that is hardwired directly to the router. The older PlayStation 4 though is hooked up to an old ass 15 year old flat screen TV. I bought that TV when I bought my PlayStation 3 to give you an idea of how old I'm talking about at this point. It supports 1080 but clearly it's not capable of handling 4K and HDR. The only games that I have played on my PlayStation 4 Pro have been Final Fantasy, Horizon Zero Dawn, and that re-release of the Marvel Ultimate Alliance crap, you know where I paid for all those years ago and I repaid for it again. <laughs> so basically it's games that don't need to be online for any particular reason. That way I don't have to worry about a Wi-Fi connection in the house and I just stick to the hardwired console for my online gaming. I will say though, Final Fantasy and Horizon Zero Dawn are absolutely stunning on my 75 inch TV. And that was before the HDR improvement that Sony rolled out. I can only imagine what those shits look like now. And for those wondering, why would I not play on my PlayStation 4 Pro? It's very simple. The 75 inch TV is for the living room and it's meant for total entertainment with TV and movies and whatnot. The PlayStation 4 Pro is a bonus being hooked up to that. Having a PlayStation 4 Pro and a 15 year old TV doesn't make a lot of sense since I don't have 4K support on that motherfucker. And realistically, getting a 4K TV just to put it on the PlayStation 4 Pro doesn't make sense either. I'm already paying off two fucking TVs at Best Buy. I don't want to add a third one to the list, no matter how cheap TVs are right now. It's just not a major priority for me right now. So I keep my PlayStation 4 Pro in the living room with my high-end TV that doubles as an entertainment center while my old ass PlayStation 4 remains hardwired next to the router hooked up to my older TV. In any event, my neighbor's setup is clearly better than my PlayStation 4 original with my old ass TV. And you can see the difference. There is no doubt about that. However, 
I decided to try oh, Destiny like 2 on my PlayStation 4 Pro and 75-inch right. TV, and I will say, it is just about as sharp as his setup. I think the loading screens provide a little bit more contrast on his, but in all honesty, there's not that big of a difference. The rest of the game, including the Genesis Mind Strike area, is pretty much on par for both high-end consoles. Now, on the flip side, my PlayStation Original is not as sharp. <laughs> to give you an idea with the lasers, the lasers on both the Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro are sharp they're crisp man i mean you just see a straight line contrasted with the background of the actual map however when you go to my original one all you see is this blurry shit <laughs> it's this fat blurry line that you can really tell the difference between the two consoles now obviously i continue to play on that one i don't worry about the blurriness and the hdr shit like that but however i will say the playstation 4 pro and the xbox one x clearly clearly beat my setup that i have hardwired right now now on the flip side when it comes to the number of things that i saw there was a few things that i was disappointed with when it came to the xbox one console first issue how slow the response time was from the controller to the game now i can't explain it fully but it really felt like there was a split second delay from the time that i pushed the shoot or the aim button to the time that it actually occurred in the game now it's not a major delay it's not like i press in then i gotta wait 10 fucking seconds but it really felt like a split second delay in the response time from the controller to the game it does not feel as responsive as both my PlayStation 4 consoles. It always felt a little bit behind where it was supposed to be. And he had a normal controller. This wasn't the Xbox Elite X switchable button motherfucker controller. <laughs> it's just the shit that you get out of the box with the actual console. Now, I'm not going to lie. It took me a hot minute to get adjusted to the controls of Xbox because as close as the controls are when it comes to button layouts, they are slightly different. The offset sticks bug the living fuck out of me. It's something I will never ever ever be able to get used to with the console that i have because i have always played on symmetrical thumbstick controllers i've always played on playstation controllers so when you throw that shit at me i was all fucked up the trigger buttons while basically in the same spot as playstation 4 they have a slightly different shape and then what was throwing me off when you add that delay into it the delay from the time that you actually press the button to what happens in the game i was having issues i'm not gonna lie throw in the offset sticks i was fucked up for a hot minute it took me a little while to get adjusted to the controller and even then i was never fully adjusted to what he was playing on another oddity that i found somewhat disappointing was the loading times now now for bragging about being the most powerful console ever i thought the loading times would be much faster personally i didn't see a difference between the xbox one x and my playstation 4 pro and that was for all parts of the game you know like calling up your inventory and waiting to see the guns load on your screen or scrolling to a different tab and waiting for the items to slowly show up or even the amount of time it took from the loading screen of flying into a planet until the screen kicked over to you actually landed i thought that shit would be faster if it is, it's not noticeable. I mean, maybe if you put them side by side, maybe if you see it in a split screen, you might see the differences. But otherwise, it was a lot slower than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be really fast, but in the end, it just felt like the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, I know his console is not faster than my original PlayStation 4 because I changed the drive in that motherfucker. The first thing I did when I bought my PlayStation 4 years ago was I installed the hybrid solid state drive and that shit is clearly faster than both factory settings on the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X. I know that I'm gonna play my friends with like Hatred and Smelly and Sky. I land at locations as the host way before they do. I mean, I start decrypting engrams before they even land in the fucking tower. <laughs> Yet when they host, I arrive at the same exact time as they do. Comparing my hybrid drive to the factory setting hard drive that the both consoles have, that's not a really fair comparison. But for PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X, I didn't see a major difference between those. I'm sure if I had a split screen right in front of me, I might see that the Xbox One X might be a touch faster, whatever the case is. But in all honesty, when you play them from the general wait time, I don't see a large difference, if at all, you see a difference. Now, obviously, I had limited time with the console, and I played a grand total of one fucking game. <laughs> Destiny 2 happened to be developed on a PlayStation 4 instead of an Xbox, so it truly isn't a fair comparison. But in the hour that I did play, I can say, the graphics on the Xbox One X when it came to the sharp textures and the contrast, they're really stunning. There is no question about that. I think they might be a touch better than PlayStation 4 Pro, but I can't say if that's the console doing that or if it's the fact that he probably has a better TV than I do. I have a high-end TV, but that motherfucker got a goddamn LG OLED TV. <laughs> I can't compete with that shit. The response time 
from the command input into the controllers to the game was slightly delayed. That was indisputable. There is no question about that. I don't know why I felt I that way, else. but I was always lagging behind in like a split second. It never felt as sharp. It never felt as concise as my PlayStation controllers. And the loading screens and the processing times didn't have a major difference. But I also have the hybrid drive on my older machine. So without a side-by-side -side comparison, I really can't tell you that, oh yeah, this one's faster, this one's slower, but I can tell you my hybrid drive is faster than both of them. That's not a fair comparison, but I can't tell you the difference between the factory settings of the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X. So overall, I played an hour, obviously not enough to sit here and be like, yes, I have the best console around that. I don't give a shit. The fact is, I got to see Destiny on an Xbox One X, the most powerful console, on a fantastic looking TV. The graphics were stunning, but some of the other things just weren't up to par that I thought would be. So anyway, that was my very brief and very quick opinion on what I thought of the console. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit, and I'll see you guys in the next video.